Welcome to God and Country Biblical Exposition. The topic for this week's program is how can Harris and Walls claim moral superiority? This is what we're hearing in the Democrat campaign, and this is what we're going to be hearing in the upcoming uh, Democrat convention next week in Chicago. Harris and Walls speak of themselves as the epitome of virtue and compassion. Their policies will bring about a good life for all Americans. But don't all politicians say this? True, but since the two political parties contradict each other, we must remember the law of non-contradiction. One party must be right and the other party wrong because two opposite values such as thou shall not murder and thou shall murder can't possibly both be true. And the same is true for all the other Ten Commandments. There are two opposing worldviews. One good, one evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. A wise man's heart directs him toward the right, and a foolish man's heart directs him toward the left. In Psalm chapter 1, there is the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. The problem is that both groups claim to be right. The world would be a less deceiving place if evil knew and admitted it was evil, if sinners actually recognized and admitted that they were sinners. When the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15 left his father's house to waste his inheritance on loose living, did he consider himself evil? Of course not. He probably thought his father was a stuffy old killjoy who didn't know how to live. Uh, did the Pharisees and the Sadducees in, in Jesus' day admit that they were evil hypocrites? Of course not. They considered themselves righteous and Jesus unrighteous. Considered the false prophets of the Old Testament. Did they recognize that they were teaching lies? Of course not. They believed that they were the true prophets of God. And the true prophets of God who held to the law of God given through Moses, well, they were considered out of touch, oppressive, intolerant, arrogant, uncompassionate, non-cosmopolitan, homophobic, xenophobic, you name it. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. And Proverbs chapter 30 verse 12, there is a kind of person who is pure in his own eyes, yet is not washed from his filthiness. And the timeless classic words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount say it all. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. Did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Notice this group is making a profession of godliness. They claim Lord, Lord. They claim to have done many wonderful works. But to their surprise, at the judgment, Jesus will reject them because in reality, they practice lawlessness. And that's the key. The practice of lawlessness. God's approval and true righteousness has nothing to do with popularity or sincerity or your feelings. What matters is whether an individual is following the moral law of God rather than his own ways, which is lawlessness. And I'll address this universal tell-tale sign again at the end of the discussion because this is how we know for sure who is true and who is false. This is how we know the difference between the right and the wrong. 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. It's obvious, but of course the world makes it non-obvious and obscures and suppresses the truth. 
So when it comes to political leaders and parties, we most often find that there is the righteous and the unrighteous. Now, as far as explaining why candidates who are unrighteous will view themselves as righteous has a lot to do with their foundation for morals and ethics. And I've explained this many times, but for the sake of new listeners, here's the short of it. People will either begin on the foundation that laws and morals are a function of God's higher law, law of nature and nature's God. Or people will begin on the foundation that laws and morals are a function of human desire and human utility. And this building upon the foundation of man rather than God can actually be religious. Because, yes, they may believe in, in God or a God, but it's assumed that God would affirm their human desires, that God's ways are their ways. So these people will build on the foundation of man, but believe in God, however, a God who affirms their sin. The error is not submitting to a standard outside of themselves. They can't even imagine that God would not affirm their desires. So upon this foundation is built a whole way of thinking, a worldview. Humanism versus theism, relativism versus absolutes, rationalism versus revelation. And this is how we eventually get liberalism versus conservatism. And hence, two different parties and two different platforms. Now, the reason the left is so convinced that they're righteous is because they're being consistent with their ideological foundation. Whenever someone sees themselves as being rationally consistent, they see themselves as righteous. For example, the Muslim who builds his moral foundation on the Quran considers himself righteous, for his standard is the Quran. Evil false teachers... They love their moral foundation. They believe it's right. Therefore, that's why they believe their policies are right. Now, the great shock would be to discover that one has built his entire worldview on the wrong foundation. And the only way to convert someone on the left is to get them to change their foundation. Uh, too often we get into political arguments on issues and we wonder why we can't make any headway. Well, because we're not addressing the foundation. I've had dozens of people tell me that the day they received Jesus as Lord was the day their politics changed. So that's the short of it. As to why people on the left believe they're the epitome of virtue. Until you build your life on Jesus Christ, you will never be able to discern good from evil. 1 Corinthians 1.30, By his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Now, before I go on, I have to address the mixture view. We'll run into people all the time who say that both parties are a mixture of good and evil, good in some policies, evil in others. So it's simply a matter of choosing which good and evil one prefers. But nevertheless, the claim is that both parties are morally equivalent. And the way this goes in American politics is the claim that the Democrats are better in regard to compassion for the poor, but the Republicans are better in regard to economic policy and national defense. Now, I believe that description is a manufactured false narrative and part of the delusion. But regardless, the mixture view is very popular, but it's not the way life really is. Uh, when the communist, communist Bolsheviks took over Russia, it wasn't as if they were just as good as those supporting uh, the current free market. When the Nazis took over Germany, it wasn't as if they were just as righteous as the Wilmar Republican Central Party. There, there's good and evil in the world. They are in opposition. 
Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, Jesus said, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. So recognize that there is a clear demarcation between good and evil in this world, and it is represented by different people and different parties. There are two paths. The way of the righteous, those who follow the law of God, and those who don't. And there's no middle ground. And this brings up another point. When, when politics, when the rhetoric of politics gets too heated, often we hear political commentators say we should never call other people or other parties evil. Because if you call others evil, that dehumanizes them and that has always resulted in unjust persecution. Well, sure, if, if it's a matter of whether to spend money on building a highway, but in serious moral issues, evil needs to be identified and called out. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14, Do not enter the paths of the wicked and do not proceed in the way of evil men. The Bible itself calls evil men evil men. So let's now talk about the positions of Kamala Harris and Tim Walls versus their claim to virtue. The, the biggest issue for the Christian community is the abortion issue. That's the only issue we'll have time to discuss in this program, but that is really all we need to know concerning which side the Democrat candidates are on, the side of righteousness or the side of evil. Harris has made pro-abortion her key platform issue, and she hopes to win by promoting a woman's right to an abortion. And she's right in this sense. This is one of the main issues that distinguishes her from Republicans. From the AP, President Joe Biden might not use the word abortion when he talks about overturning Roe versus Wade, but Vice President Kamala Harris sure does. She also toured a Minnesota Planned Parenthood clinic where the procedure is performed, and she routinely links the fall of Roe to the larger issue of rising uh, maternal mortality nationwide. Now that Harris is running for president in place of Biden, Democrats and advocates for reproductive rights are hoping that her bluntness on abortion, coupled with the administration's policies, will help sway voters to deliver them not just the White House, but key congressional seats as well, unquote. So there's no doubt that Harris is the pro-abortion candidate. Here's just one clip of hundreds of Harris campaigning on the foundation of abortion. Republicans in Congress are now calling for a nationwide abortion ban. <laughs> from the moment of conception. The right of every woman in every state in this country to make decisions about her own body is on the line. And I've said it before and I will say it again, how dare they? How dare they? From Kansas to California, Michigan, Montana, Kentucky, and Vermont, they spoke with their vote. In essence, they said, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree that the government should not be telling people what to do with their own bodies. What a lie, what an obfuscation. A woman is not primarily making a decision about her own body, she is making the decision to take the life of another human being. The slogan, my body, my choice, is a lie to make evil sound righteous. It's not about your body, but the body of the child. And to take the life of another person is not your choice. Look at how Harris is exalting a woman's own self-determination over the life of a child, which is the very definition of murder killing those who get in the way of your own ambitions. And the government can tell people what to do with their own bodies. 
if they're using their own bodies to kill someone else. Kamala Harris lacks moral understanding. And that's putting it mildly. By the way, Harris also claims that you can keep your faith and believe in abortion. She, have, she always loves to throw in that line. But 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So I could go on and refute her abortion arguments, but that's not the subject for this program. But also in regard to abortion, the running mate that Harris chose, Tim Walls, is radical pro-abortion right up to the moment of birth. That's likely the main reason Harris chose him. Last year, Walsh signed a bill into law in Minnesota declaring abortion to be a fundamental right that can be exercised without restriction at all stages of pregnancy. Walls also eliminated a Minnesota law in the book since 1976 requiring medical personnel to try to save babies born alive after abortion. For Walls, the baby is to be left to die or further be mutilated to ensure death. Walls also eliminates, eliminated state funding for all pro-life pregnancy centers, but continued to fund Planned Parenthood. Uh, since Roe v. Wade was overturned, abortions in Minnesota are up 25%, and Walls is glad for it. But in this, the Democrat ticket is exposing where they are morally. You see, many good people don't know much about the details of politics, but the abortion issue is a God-given red flag for God's people to easily know who to vote for and who not to vote for. If a candidate can't figure out that killing a baby in the womb of the mother is the height of evil, that candidate is in moral darkness. As the evangelical leader R.C. Sproul once said, never vote for a candidate for any office, including dog catcher, who is pro-abortion. Unquote. Because if a candidate doesn't realize abortion is evil, his moral compass doesn't face true north. And he will also be wrong in just about every other moral political decision. It's no coincidence that the party that is pro-abortion is also pro-LGBTQ, pro-men and women's sports, pro-globalism, pro-Marxism. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 5. Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand all things. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 11. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 16. For their feet run to evil, and they hasten to shed blood. Proverbs chapter 6. There are six things which, which the Lord hates, yes, seven which are an abomination to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Now, the Democrats know that their pro-abortion position is indicting. So beware of the counter-argument they have put forth to try to give them some moral equivalency with pro-life candidates. And the claim is that because the Democrats push for social welfare programs, they care more about babies after they're born. While Republicans only care about babies in the womb, Democrats care more for babies after birth. So therefore, Democrats are just as righteous, if not more righteous. I know this is a ludicrous argument but it is put forth as a serious one, and many people believe it. Some leading evangelicals have even suggested this same argument. Here's a quote from one evangelical leader. There might be more important ways for voters to promote pro-life policies than simply electing politicians who promise to restrict or end abortion. One might decide that the best way to vote for life would be to select a candidate whose official platform was pro-abortion, but who supports subsidizing daycare or paid family leave, making having children more appealing. 
That is exactly the same erroneous moral equivalency argument used by the Democrats that you can be just as pro-life by being pro-abortion. So what's the fallacy? What mistake did this evangelical leader make? Well, it's the same mistake made by the Pharisees, neglecting the weightier matters of the law. You see, the Pharisees could find biblical laws to support their policies, but Jesus condemned them for breaking the law of God by putting lower laws above God's higher laws, failing to understand weightier matters of the law. And the preservation of life is the higher law of God, allowing for the murder of some, but taking care of those you don't murder doesn't justify your support for murder. It doesn't make you a good person. Keeping laws about feeding the poor doesn't make murder righteous. Murder is such a heinous act that supporting daycares or paid family leave isn't even close to being morally equivalent to stopping those who are actively murdering children. Can you imagine someone saying, even though Hitler is incinerating the Jews, you should still vote for Hitler because he's encouraging Germans to have more babies and building daycares, which is exactly what Hitler did. Inverting the hierarchy of God's law is what deceives many people. For the Democrats, in believing that personal choice, which can be a virtue in some circumstances, believing that it's a higher value than life, or for some deceived evangelicals who believe charity is just as high a value as protecting life. But I'm digressing here. What's my point? Discerning who is righteous and who is evil is often not clear to many. Not because God's law and his spirit or our God-given conscience is not clear, but sin deceives the human heart. It deceives the mind with false rationalizations. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is more deceitful than anything else, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. The unsaved, they walk in the futility of their mind. They're darkened in their understanding. They're excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them, because of the hardness of their heart. So let's not be surprised when at next week's Democrat convention, all the speakers will glowingly portray themselves and their party and their platform as holier than thou. And they will do this in all sincerity when in fact they are promoting evil. And please understand the fact that they are deceived and the fact that they are sincere does not lessen the guilt of their wickedness one iota. Because unfortunately, most people think that if a moral standard is found to be debatable and there are people on both sides of the argument, surely it must not be part of the definitive law of God. But no people can be sincere and yet practice pure evil the fact that they justify and rationalize evil doesn't lessen the evil. It just shows that they are more evil. They become so evil, they're calling evil good and good evil. The typical criminal knows he's doing wrong. It takes a psychopath to do evil and think he's doing good. Proverbs 17, 15. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous. Both of them alike are an abomination to the Lord. Notice the two sides justifying the evil, and then condemning or calling evil those who are righteous. This is what we're going to see going on at the political convention next week. So let me close with a word about the power of deception, the deception of sin. The topic is, how can Harris and Walls claim moral superiority? And the answer, because they have deceived hearts and minds by their willful choice. Isaiah 44, he feeds on ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside and he cannot deliver himself nor say, is there not a lie in my right hand? We must come to understand the biblical doctrine of sin in regard to the power of sin's deception. 
where the false prophets always thought that they were the righteous ones. They had no doubt of it. They were sure that they were the good people of the world. The road to hell is always paved with good intentions. And, and that's really hard for people to understand. Mostly because people judge right and wrong by feelings, not by the word of God. The Bible speaks often about the deception of sin. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 With all deception of wickedness for those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. Revelation 12, Satan is the one who goes forth to deceive the whole world. And Jesus often talked about the deception of sin, especially in regard to the Pharisees. Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. They are the blind guides of the blind. Spiritually, they are morally blind themselves. And they lead those who are also spiritually morally blind. It's often asked, do those on the left know that they're blind? Do they know that they're lying? I would say yes in regard to certain policy proposals. Let me give an example. This week, the Democrat campaign put out a commercial that depicts Harris as being tough on crime and tough on border enforcement. The commercial claims that as vice president, she backed the toughest border control bill in decades. And as president, she will hire thousands of extra border agents. Here's the clip. Kamala Harris has spent decades fighting violent crime. As a border state prosecutor, she took on drug cartels and jailed gang members for smuggling weapons and drugs across the border. As vice president, she backed the toughest border control bill in decades. And as president, she will hire thousands more border agents and crack down on fentanyl and human trafficking. Fixing the border is tough. So is Kamala Harris. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. But what this commercial doesn't tell the audience is that the Democrat border bill that Harris supported would make it legal for thousands of immigrants to enter our country daily and it called for the hiring of thousands of new Border Patrol agents, not to police the border, but simply to process more immigrants for entrance. The Democrat bill that Harris supported was a lie, like the inflation reduction bill that actually increased government spending. The legislation was a political ploy by the Democrats to get Republicans to vote it down. So the Democrats could say, they presented a border protection bill, but the Republicans didn't want it because Republicans wanted to keep the issue alive. And now they're using the bill for the exact purpose it was intended, to give the Democrats cover in regard to the border crisis. They know it's a lie. It is devious Machiavellian politics. So Harris and the Democrats know they're lying to the American public. But even in this, they don't consider it lying. They consider it good politics. It's just withholding some truth. And of course, if you want to win conservative votes, you have to speak as a conservative. Why wouldn't you? You want to win, don't you? So in regard to some specific policies, the Democrats know that they're lying to win votes. But overall, they truly believe their worldview is the correct one. And in that sense, they are the blind leading the blind. It's not as if they're actually saying to themselves, we know we're on Satan's side. We know we hate God and we know we're the evil ones. In Matthew chapter 23, in the lengthy text where Jesus condemns the Pharisees, he calls them blind five times. And look at how Jesus describes their claim to righteousness. Matthew 23, 28. So you too outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Outwardly, they appear righteous. Now, in studying the subject this week, I noticed that in the Old Testament, we often read about the ungodly thinking that they're in the right, but it's really in the Gospels. In the example of the Pharisees, that brings this truth to its climax. Because they would crucify God in the flesh. 
thinking that they were doing the right thing. In fact, they were deceivers, but they called Jesus the deceiver. That's how upside down the world is. And in John 16, 2, Jesus told his disciples that the day is coming, that the world is going to be so deceived that those who kill you will think they're offering service to God. Now, if we have any humility, we would be asking ourselves the question, how do we know whether or not we are the deceived ones? Maybe the Republicans or the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the false teachers and the Democrats are the good people like Jesus. After all, Jesus said at the judgment, many will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we perform many miracles? Didn't we perform many wonderful works in your name? And Jesus will say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. Maybe that's us. The left certainly wants us to think that. The power of deception is that the deceived assume that they're in the right. We assume we're in the right. We assume we're on God's side. But maybe we're deceived. Well, here's the difference. And this is the only way you can tell by the moral standards of the Word of God. Notice the Matthew 7.21 text. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, but he who does the will of my Father. And Jesus will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's the key. These people didn't follow the moral law of God. That's the telltale sign. The false prophets in the Old Testament didn't follow the moral law of God. They followed the immorality of Baal worship. And the Pharisees didn't follow the moral law of God, but transgressed the commandments of God for the sake of their traditions. Matthew 15. So if words mean what words mean, and sentences mean what sentences mean, the moral law of God is clear. Those who support abortion, transgenderism, uh, gender fluidity, LGBTQ affirmation, they are the workers of iniquity. They are the lawless ones, plain and simple. We don't have to doubt. Now, this does not mean that everyone in the Republican Party is automatically fully righteous and justified before God, but biblically, they are those who are on God's side in regard to these crucial higher law, higher law of God issues. I'm out of time. Next week, we'll pick up this subject again as the Democratic Convention takes place and as we'll be exposed to the media proclaiming all of the righteousness and the goodness of the Democrat Party. I've only dealt with uh, Harris and Walls in regard to their stand on abortion, uh, but we need to look into many of their other lawless policies. Thanks for listening. Be a follower of the Word of God, not your feelings. And may Jesus Christ reign. Oh,